Mirko, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Dante. I'm oh, happy to man. Be here. So we're in Vegas today. We're in, uh, actually, this is what, the Red Rock Casino. Yep. Beautiful place, uh, um, you know, uh, in the suburb of Las Vegas. Yeah. You know, Love a lot of thing. people have heard of you, Mirko, but for those that have not, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how you got started in music, because you're a phenomenal uh, musician and multi-instrumentalist. Uh, piano, guitar, probably some other things, but tell us how you got started and where are you from originally? So, I'm from Italy, so we, we clarify immediately the accent. Okay. <laughs> I'm from northwest of Italy, Piemonte, Piedmont, mm -hmm. a little town near Torino called Casale Monferrato. Ah. That sounds amazing, but like, <laughs> it's a small town. Okay. I love that so town. It sounds exotic though. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is for sure. And a uh, small town, 25,000 inhabitants, I think, a little more probably. So, uh, everything started there when I was five. Okay. And I have to say thank you, of course, to my family, especially my sister. Right. Uh, because she started to play piano. Okay. And uh, in the middle school. She's like Laura. Hi, Laura. Uh, she started when I was five, she was 10. And uh, that's how the piano came into the house. Okay. I started going like with my grandma, like bringing, like going to take my sister. She was 10. She was not like, somebody like able to go by herself at school or something so we were like going to take her from school okay. i was five by hand with my grandma and i remember that sound of the piano ah. coming out from one of those lessons and i was already mesmerized you were hooked i was attracted yeah <laughs> and and uh, what happened that like when the piano came home i was super attracted by the instrument okay naturally and uh i remember like this big monster with the teeth big white teeth that I was like little <laughs> compared to him. I've heard that and, before. That's, yeah. that's crazy. But. And, uh, and I, I was trying to play it. Every time my sister was like taking a break from exercises, I was trying, but I was too little to climb the stool yeah. and like to reach the piano. And also she was closing the piano many times. So I was not able to lift the, the lid. So one day she left the piano open and the stool was in the perfect position for me to climb it. Uh, so I did. Uh, and the, the piano was in uh, my sister room. And yeah, so one, one day my mom, my grandma and my, my sister like heard the piano start playing by himself. Okay. By itself. And they were scared immediately in, initially <laughs> it's because like, it's a ghost playing. <laughs> and it was me trying to repeat by ear what my sister was playing. Okay. So at that point, my grandma said like, oh, we probably need to put this guy <laughs> in lessons. So I started at five, okay. now I'm 45. So I started 40 years ago playing nice. piano. Beautiful. After 13, yeah, 13 years. No, I was uh, 13. So mm -hmm. after eight years of studying classical, mm -hmm. I had a hard turn <laughs> as, as studies because like, I was loving everything about classical, the training, but one day my teacher, I was doing a pri private lessons. Yes. My teacher welcomed me in the house. He didn't know I was already close to the house. So I was hearing already with Green Balls of Fire. Ah, Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. He was just like playing it. And for me, it was a punch in the brain. I was like, wait a second. I can play piano like that. So not, not classical, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And from that moment was, okay, no, I don't want a classical anymore. With, all the respect, I love classical, but my jam was rock and roll and blues. So I started asking him, please teach me. And he was like, no, 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 no. We need to do one hour classical. And then we started like, the deal was like one hour classical, five minutes blues. After one year, I was doing one hour blues and rock and roll, five minutes classical. Ah, that's then rich. like high school and everything, I did martial arts my whole life. So I was a busy, a busy kid. So I stopped uh, doing, having private lessons with piano and I started like going by myself just improvising mm -hmm, a lot mm -hmm. I love to improvise mm -hmm. not just a player at all that's I, okay but I what can... you do is very 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 amazing and, and incredibly you. entertaining not everyone does jazz but when we you know sort of specialize in, in a certain area that's all we need yeah no you know? that's your soul like, I, I always say that to musicians you need to play what your soul is craving so yes. If you crave for blues, even if many people are saying, oh, blues is easy, like one for five, it's true. Like if, if you play music, you know, it's not the most difficult thing in the world, but, but it's your soul. That's like, true. And, and, and one person's one for five is not like, you know, Herbie Hancock's one for five. You know, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got you. 
Okay, so tell us a little bit about how you made the transition from Italy to the United States. How did that all work out? Uh, in one word, holidays. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, well, uh, I work all my life, so part of my job, especially in Italy, uh, I'm a sound engineer, okay. so I'm a certified sound engineer. I studied, I did college, right, to became right. a sound engineer. I'm specialized in post-production, mm -hmm. audio post-production. Mm -hmm. uh, so I start very, very young, being interested about, beside music, in sound mm -hmm. and movies. Yes. So I start composing music for movies, but more than everything, doing audio post complete audio post-production for, mm -hmm. for movies. So that was my main job in Italy for 22 years. Okay. Um, of course, as Italian, Hollywood was there, like very up in the sky and not reachable. Like it's Hollywood. And one day uh, I had like a friend telling me why we don't go to L LA. I'm go like, for it. Wait a second, because in that moment, the production I was working for was stopped okay. for three months. So I'm like, okay, well, sounds good. Let's go. I remember right like now, I have that feeling, if I think about that moment, is in me still. I landed in LA, mm -hmm. and I don't know, inside the plane, there was something that I was like, why I feel home? Ah. Why I feel like that's the place, yeah. that's where I should yeah. be. I was feeling like perfect. I was like, probably was excitement because it was the first time in the US. So for me, before I grow up, as I say during my performance, I say that every time, I, you guys in the US, you raised me up because like all I was hearing was not Italian music that I, I love, of course, it's, it's my DNA. And, uh, but I grew up playing Fat Domino, Jerry Lee Lewis, all the Louisiana, Memphis blues. So you raised me up literally as, as music wise. Oh. So uh, I was excited, mm -hmm. even if I was not there, I was not in Memphis, but I was in LA. Like, so I was curious about Hollywood, about everything. Once I started like socializing in LA, I find out it was very easy and amazing the way you can do public relation here, networking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like find people to collaborate. I started collaborating from Italy okay. with people just in that trip. I, I had so many connections that yeah. I started like doing music for short movies in LA. Meanwhile, I was working in Italy. So I was sending the music or like collaborating in sound, doing sound design. So for me, it was clear that like my soul was completely in the direction of LA or US, California, and everything. So after a while, I was able to move my life or to start moving my life in California, thanks to a common friend, Alex. Yes, yes. From a restaurant called Gourmet Italia. Gourmet Italia. That I say hi, thank you, Alex, again. Hello, I be, Alex. I will be forever grateful. Uh, so I became like one of the, re so I was resident as a resident mm -hmm. pianist mm -hmm. at Gourmet Italia. And uh, so that's where I started. I met you there. And Actually, like, no, I think we met at a jam you're right. across town you're right. somewhere in that, in that area. You're right. Crazy jam. Because yes, like, yes. I met at Gourmet Italia, but then I jammed with him uh -huh. and with you uh -huh, uh -huh. the same night, I yeah. think. Marco Mineman. Yes. He's one of the world famous... One of the, one of the best drummers in the world. Absolutely. In the top ten. Uh, well, easily, top five, probably easily. top five. Easily, uh, easily. In Prague. I, I'm a Prague guy, so I okay. grew up playing also Dream Theater. I love Jordan Rudess between my, my, my idols. Uh, so I remember the day when he walked to the piano with Alex saying like, hey, you're doing a great job. And when I didn't know it was him, I paid like 100 bucks in Italy to go see him him and the aristocrats. That they and were, now he's right here at your show. Was in front of me, like, <laughs> I, I was like, that, that's part of the magic of the US, yeah. especially California or Nevada too. You never know who's gonna show up. Yeah, so, and one week later, I was jamming with him, playing Jimi Hendrix in, in uh, Lake Elsinore. In Lake right? Elsinore. Yeah, so that was something amazing. Then, so Alex, Gourmet Italia, Temecula, California, beautiful place. Yes. I was there for probably a little more than two years. And then, you know, uh, I'm a musician. I started like n connecting with people. Vegas was kind of a natural attraction for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the world known capital of entertainment. Absolutely. So like, like, okay, let's give it a shot. The first two years in Las Vegas were rough. Yeah, why so, why so? Well, first of all, I was, I'm like, Italy is a humid place, especially where I, li where I was used to live. It's a kind of humid place, okay. so 
it's very, very hard to, to find these weather conditions, especially by summer, super hot and super dry. So the first two years I was like, what am I doing here? I was not feeling good. Okay. I dry like my voice right, and everything, right. dry and everything. Then probably, you know, the evolution, <laughs> I started like feeling better. The competition in this town is amazing. Like mm -hmm. there is, there are so many, thank God, our old friends uh, or some. A lot of yeah. talented people, right? Oh my God. It's, it's just like the competition and the level uh -huh, is uh -huh, high. So uh -huh. you need to step up. So, uh, and I like that. I like challenges. So okay. for me, it was challenging. Mm -hmm. And like, it's still, yeah. I'm, I'm living here since four years now. Is a super challenge every day. I you have that feeling that you need like okay, I need to improve yeah. my live looping. I need to improve my yeah. skills on piano. I need yeah. to improve me singing. Let's learn a new song. Let's dismantle a new song and play it my way. Yeah, because I want to do something that nobody does. Because that you, that's the feeling you have you have in Las Vegas. You need to match the sure. level. People are expecting performers mm -hmm. for Las Vegas. So that's super challenging, and I love it. Okay, so on the subject of Las Vegas and making that change, the transition from Italy, to California, uh, to Mecula, the French Valley, to Las Vegas. Okay, now that you're in this situation, tell us a little bit about some of the challenges, other than the weather. We understand it's very dry here in Las Vegas compared to other, other places, especially in Italy. But what are some of the challenges, like, musically that you, that you may have had particularly in what you do. Like, in other words, you do some of the uh, bigger things here, some of the casinos occasionally, then you do some of your solo work. Yeah. Last night, for example, um, we had the opportunity to attend the um, Sebastian Maniscalco show. Oh, yeah. Uh, at, 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 at the Wind, at the Wind, the, the Encore Theater at the Wind. Yeah. And so after that, um, it was wild. I mean, this is a this is a wild weekend in La I mean, literally, it's the Wild West. A lot of crazy things happening. Give us an example of something crazy that happened to you on stage while you're doing your show. Well, I uh, I can pick. <laughs> give us give us the best one. Well, the best one there are two. Um, besides seeing people fainting okay. because they're drunk on a fancy restaurant that you pay probably like hundred to. 150 bucks mm -hmm. for a steak you see like sometimes somebody that you never expect that like just being that drunk that they just go face down mm -hmm. on the ground they live in front you're playing sure. and they live on a wheelchair okay and it's something that you don't see okay. too much okay but, but it's kind of normal like you're like okay bye like and you're like ah, okay sorry <laughs> like what's happening anyway that then somebody like trying to tip me like so usually i love to play real pianos of course and I was playing a real piano here in Red Rock as I play a real piano at Hanks, which is a steakhouse amazing, at Green Valley Ranch every yes. Monday. Yes. So here happened at the lobby bar one night that the guy, super nice, but like he was thinking to be cool, tipping me, throwing a poker chip okay. inside the piano. All right. So meanwhile, I was playing, the poker chip start, start bouncing on the strings. And I was, I had to stop playing. Like, because like this? I was... <laughs> The poker chip was playing instead of me. And then I had to dig like inside the piano to get the poker chip. And he was like, oh, yeah, that was cool. Like, no, that it was, was not cool. OK, so that's something he had too much to drink, right? Uh, maybe, A little bit, maybe, happens. maybe. And another very nice woman. So usually I drink. I'm not a drinker. I know this weird for Las Vegas. I probably drink one drink during the night. That's that's Just, wise. You're yeah, working. Well, no. Yeah. Um, so usually I have water, a lot of water. Water. Yeah. Okay. I drink like a sip of water every song. Stay hydrated. And so I put like near the piano my glass of water, and this girl come with ten bucks and put ten bucks inside my water, thinking it was the tip jar. How did you deal with it? I say thank you, and I ask another water to the bottom. <laughs> okay, that's all you could do. <laughs> and I tried the ten bucks. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that I mean that's a great. Those are great examples of just like how anything could happen. You know when you're on the stage, yeah, and it's it serves to your professionalism, on the grace that you that you dealt with that, and I mention that because you know we've been seeing a lot of things in the media where a lot of very famous people are not dealing with things very well. You know, I'm not going to mention the Oscars, but they're not dealing with <laughs> things very well. Travel-wise, though, you know, you are you know all around the world, you know, in a period of certain years. Yeah. 
what do you think about the situation that's happening in Europe now? And how do your friends back home in Europe feel about that? Well, it's a very hard situation and, in my opinion, incredible because in 2022, let's say almost 2023, we are in the halfway almost. At the world war yeah. should be only probably in video games. Okay. Not in not the real, real stuff. World. So unfortunately we are I I I, I don't like politics. I'm yeah. far from politics. Sure, I sure, sure. I love common sense. Yeah. So I don't think there is anything in the world right now mm -hmm. that cannot be solved okay. through talking, dialogue. Yeah. As in a couple, as in a relationship. Okay. You have to solve your problem through dialogue. Okay. If you can't fine we are not too much friend but come more respect and maturity sure i think it should be the same with countries and with any kind of political side okay. i always do this example about politics could be left right blue red whatever co color i always say about the piano i'm a pianist i have two ends uh -huh. the right hand and the left hand they do different jobs they could be easily against each other yeah. because she loves melodies uh -huh. she loves rhythm and fat stuff happening <laughs> okay so they're not doing the same thing mm -hmm. but they need to work together yeah. in order to have a song yes i feel the same about politics, about europe like any any kind of environment where like you need to find a common way to keep going yeah so what throwing bombs or killing each other is just stupid okay well, well let's just may hope that everyone can sit down at the table and resolve things yeah. soon right but so anyway like ukraine is very close to italy mm -hmm. of course there are a lot of i i i talk with my my sister is also in the red cross chalaura in the italian red cross it's kind of scary yeah because like you yeah. know the things can go south very very quickly mm -hmm. uh, for sure after everything happened in 2020 we didn't need that yeah we need some peace in general so let's hope that everything absolutely. works well and absolutely hope for that you played a little bit in your set earlier uh you know a little bit of guitar you were amazing on the guitar well, thank so you. you talked about how you got started and your how your lessons transitioned from classical to more of a rock and i know your influence is jerry lee lewis and some others but how did the guitar get in the picture? You didn't, you didn't mention it. Tell us so, a little bit about the that. The guitar started when I was, the inter interest about guitar was started when I was 16. Okay. And I was uh, playing a band. Uh -huh. We were doing our songs and we were kind of, I would say kind of prog, prog rock. Uh -huh. Let's say it with all respect, something in the middle between the cure and trying to be prog or, you know, mm -hmm. we were young. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that was the influence. My guitar player, Paolo Gabotto, Ciao Paolo, was, I, he's still amazing. He was amazing. I was, every time he was doing a solo, I was like kind of losing the track of what I was doing on, on the keyboard because mm -hmm. I was like, my God, this solo on guitar. And that voice of the guitar was like, <sighs> every time I was like, holding my breath because it was amazing. I was the, like coming out from the song, like, oh my God, this, this, that's what I like. And back in the days I was playing a Korg M1 that is still in Italy, a uh, keyboard that I love. Uh -huh. uh, but any guitar song, like you can solo with a synth, but any guitar was fake. Mm. So I was starting, like I was already composing some music Every time I was composing music, that kind of music, uh, rock or something, fusion, I was missing something. Okay. I was like, hey, like I miss that voice, I miss that solo. Mm. So I started, like one day, I remember I was in the, uh, during a break, during our rehearsals, and I asked him, hey, Paolo, can I, can I try your guitar? Mm. And he goes like, go. So it was kind of natural, I, I developed a good ear, so I was kind of doing the same solo, same story of my kind of my sister happened. So I was trying to find the notes and he, he told me like, hey, you should think about playing a little more guitar, guitar, take it more serious. Yeah. Ended up that like in a few months, we, we were doing also some covers and we started doing a cover from, I remember from Metallica, where like we're supposed to be two guitars and okay. I was the second guitar. Okay. So that was the start and then I got hooked. I was already hooked with Dream Theater, Stratovarius, all that progs stuff. And then uh, I was playing keyboards 
but then I was attracted by John Petrucci, Joe Satriani, Steve Vai. That's uh -huh. when I started like being, oh my God, I need that. That's part of my soul too. Sure. So sure. I started like kind of putting aside a little bit the keyboard and the piano uh -huh. and started like oh, having like my, my finger bleeding uh, from guitar. Yeah. That's how I started like being like, I still don't call myself a guitar player for the respect to get real guitar, for who I think is a real guitar player. So I always say like, yeah, I play guitar. I play some guitar. I'm not, I'm not consider myself a guitar player. It's weird, uh, but no, it's how, no. <laughs> how we, how we I've been at this a while. You, you do very nicely, my Thank friend. Thank you. Thank you very, so much. Very nicely. Um, okay, musically speaking, though, uh, as far as uh, a product, I know you've got some new music out there in the yeah. world. Tell us a little bit about the latest album and what is the style of it and where can people buy it or stream it? So, uh, I honestly, I don't know why I waited so much in uh -huh. my life to put something in, uh, out there. I'm very hypercritic. Like, I, if you see, like, I have so many friends, like, shooting live videos or they're, like, doing, like, live Facebook. If I see the video of me playing, I hate every single moment of okay. me singing, me playing. So I'm hypercritic. I'm always, okay. no, oh, oh, my God. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like it. So that's why probably I, I waited, I waited, I waited. Then, unfortunately, three years ago, I have like a, a sad event in my life. My dad passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. And thank you. Uh, he was one of my, as all my family, but my father was one of my huge fans. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually was the one that even when he was sick, he, I was ready to go back to Italy okay. when we find out. But he told me, don't move. I want to think about my son chasing his dreams, stay there, you will help me more staying there than coming here, looking at me, and that's you can do That's very beautiful, very, yeah, my father. very giving of him to think of yeah. that in that time. Yeah. That's, Definitely, that's yes. beautiful. So with that in my heart, of course, everything happened in one year. I was able to say bye to him uh, last month of his life. But anyway, after that it was clear in my mind that I needed to pay tribute in some ways. Okay. Uh, that's why the name of my album is The Father and the Son. Okay. The th sorry, The Three and the Son. The Three and the Son. My, so the three for me is my family. Mm -hmm. Also my father. I always saw like one of the first memory I have with him was him bringing me to a, in, in front of a tree. Mm -hmm. it was a, um, yeah, I don't remember that, the, but it was a big tree. Anyway, uh, from that point, the strong, like the strength of my father for me, it was was the energy was coming like from a tree, a huge tree that mm -hmm. is so big that you can't even hug yeah. that tree because it's like very strong and big. So the tree and the sun, not the sun, but the sun as a as a his kid. Sure, it's like uh, a play on words. Yeah, yeah, like, beautiful. So nice. uh, and in the cover, you can see like a kid trying to reach the tree because I'm far from my family, so I can't reach them, mm -hmm. and I can't reach anymore my father. Okay. In the reflection on the water, I reach the tree because okay. my heart is connected with him and with my family. So. Oh, beautiful. So we know that you're playing a lot of uh, things on there yourself, but do you have any guest artists, uh, you know, sort of adding to anything? Or is it basically Not all yet. you? Not yet. Like okay. uh, in, the, in the album is all me. Uh, there are like five instrumental songs and uh, three with my voice too, mm -hmm. where I sing. One is a cover that I love is Creep from Radiohead. Uh, so one song, one of the three is, called, is uh, Creep from Radiohead. One is, is straight Italian, dedicated to my, favorite, my father. Okay. Um, and another one is in English, with a huge accent, as you can tell. Well, when I sing, it's going away a little bit, but... Um, so the other ones are just instrumental. My natural flow is kind of cinematic. Okay. Like, yeah. I love to compose emotional music. Mm basically instrumental. I'm not great on putting down words. I, I'm starting now. Well, I love instrumental music, so I can relate to that. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, I think like music is the universal language, so yes. you, we don't need to be from the same country or like speaking any language. It's clear that there is an emotion inside that, and you can see that emotion in other ways yes. than me, but still it's something I'm trying to communicate to you. It's a language. Absolutely. So, yeah, so it's my first album. Uh, this year I, I want to put out other two albums. One very electronic, the other one more rock, playing more guitar. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, yeah so okay so once again the title is the tree and, and the, sun. the sun tree and the sun and are there physical copies of this available or is it only something people can stream or download so uh, what I was thinking is, uh, is just kind of nobody that I know is playing CDs mm -hmm. anymore so what I did that I have like a few copies like I have 300 copies of that uh, I have like USB keys okay that are printed USB keys mm -hmm. like rounded I, I like the idea uh, they didn't go so well even trying to sell it like during the live sure because everybody now okay USB could be an option but everybody's streaming streaming so I'm kind of everywhere so Spotify Apple music all the main streaming platform okay if you look about my all right weird name <laughs> and and what is your website do you have a website yes it's my name dot la my last name so it's mirko m-i-r-k-o dot barbezino uh -huh. if you want me i spell the last name spell it out no spell it out b-a b-a-r-b-e-s-i-n-o okay dot com okay mirko dot barbezino dot com um and there there is everything there is also like my sound engineering jobs mm -hmm. some news of course i'm on social media Awesome. And uh, there, there is a link where you can like listen to my music and everything. Wonderful. Well, that, thank you for giving, filling us in the blanks. People know now where to find you. A lot of your friends back home in Europe can uh, sort of reconnect that maybe you haven't had a chance to, you know, stay connected with and sort of see what you're up to. And you're going to meet some new friends along the way. We appreciate you coming today. Let me just close with this, yeah. um, Mirko. What words of wisdom? would you offer to fellow musicians either back home in Italy or anywhere in the world that are just starting out that they wanted to sort of do what you do follow in your footprints and maybe leave their hometown come to Hollywood or come to Las Vegas what would you say to them for sure don't be scared uh, don't don't listen to people okay listen to yourself uh, don't don't think that your music is not good enough like just pour whatever you feel to do mm -hmm. in your like that's you okay. even if you want to play covers it's your your way to play covers okay and like people are like as as a professional musician uh, working here in las vegas since now four years i can tell you will always find somebody that is upset about your music right that's not something you need to care about. Like okay. there is somebody else that is crazy happy about your music. Focus on those people, right? Focus on those people, but main than everything, focus on you having fun. Okay. Music needs to be you having fun. Okay. Don't let anything negative, anything even too positive affect you. Mm -hmm. Because like I have like somebody like that I know here in town that like thinks, oh, I'm a superstar now. You're not. You're still playing a Sweet Caroline. <laughs> Get real. As everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, like you need to be real for sure, but like don't let nobody affect your your music, your soul. Yeah. And play with your soul. Okay. Never take music as a job. Okay. Like playing those four chords. Put your every heart night. into it. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Mirko, thank you so much for thank coming, you. talking to Viewphonic TV today, and blessings thank to you. you in your career. Thank you so much. You're let very me well. say thank you also to Station Casinos. All right. That are guesting me. Thank you. Thank you.